The following program is a production of Pioneer Public Television. In this episode of Postcards... I bought the Vern Drive-In Theater uh, 13 years ago, and we opened up uh, in July the first year. And there's just nothing like being in the studio, and you're, the time goes by like you wouldn't believe. So in the post-production process is when I really have my fun and the show will come together for me. This program on Pioneer Public Television is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the Vote of the People of Minnesota on November 4, 2008. Additional support provided by Mark and Margaret Yakel Julien in honor of Shalom Hill Farm, a nonprofit rural education retreat center in a beautiful prairie setting near Wyndham in southwestern Minnesota. ShalomHillFarm.org. The Arrowwood Resort and Conference Center. Your ideal choice for Minnesota resorts offering luxury townhomes, 18 holes of golf, Darling Reflection Spa, Big Splash Water Park, and much more. Alexandria, Minnesota, a relaxing vacation or great location for an event. Explore Alex.com. Easy to get to, hard to leave. At the Vern Drive-In Theater, visitors take a nostalgic trip back to a time when moviegoers could watch from their cars on nice summer nights. I bought the drive in Laverne, Minnesota in 1966. Ken Sargent was the original owner and he built the Vern Driving Theater. We live right next to the ticket booth and we built the house 35 years ago. But we walk every day. Every morning a mile and at night a mile. Time we had one car, it said uh, Deliverance, the one we played that show, it was a canoe. We had top of our car and we drove around town and other towns just for advertisement. <laughs> There's uh, one time we had a chainsaw massacre, a movie, and uh, I took a chainsaw and I took the chain out of it. And there's a bunch of girls in the car and I took the chainsaw out of the car and started up and I'll tell you, they piled out of that car and just rolled out. And that, they just laughed, and the owner of the theater that's got it today, he's seen that happen. I'm noted for that. I've been doing that for years, even yet today. <laughs> I sold a theater in 1983. It was real, real hard, but we thought it would be a little easier than it was. After we got out of it, we wished we'd had it back. Now we're close, and we're sort of involved real big in it yet. I just love people. I like when they come in, at the, I take their tickets, and I just love taking tickets. And half the people used to come to the show when I had it, and they bring their kids now. And that's what's fun about it. Whenever we see the crowd come, if they need help, I just watch. When the line gets big, I just run out and I help to let the cars in, and then I come home and sit here until they line up again. And I bought the Vern Drive-In Theater uh, 13 years ago, and we opened up uh, in July the first year. Probably one of the more noticeable changes in the theater uh, since we've opened is there's, there's no speaker post um, sitting on the humps of the theater with the speakers on. Um, modern theaters nowadays, they play their sound for the, mu uh, the movies um, comes through the car stereo. Uh, the ticket building was built by us and the concession building was built by us. 
And I realized there was a whole generation of families and kids that were not ever able to go to a, an outdoor movie theater because they, they had closed. And I thought it would be fun to, to bring that back for the young families and the teenagers that never got to go to an outdoor movie theater. We kind of pride ourselves um, with our movie prices. We're $5 for adults for two movies. Children 11 and under are free. Um, we haven't changed our movie prices since we opened. When I bought the theater, I kind of vowed to never change the prices admission. And I like $5. It keeps a lot of customers coming back with, to the movies because of our prices. I think it's unique, the theater's unique in that it's very affordable for the young people, young families. Um, there's not many drive-in theaters left in Minnesota or for in the whole country actually. So it's, it's kind of special and a lot of the people have told me when they're driving here from a distance that they're with their children and it's a good time to have one-on-one -on -one with their family and, and when they're at the movie it's the same thing. It's totally worth it um, for the months that you're open, just being around the people and having the people thank you for keeping the theater open and doing a good job and having a nice clean place, affordable place to go. It's a family affair. Grandkids, uh, my boys that live in Laverne, they all work at the theater since they were old enough until they went to college. I have some of the best employees uh, you could ask for on probably five families. I'm on their third sibling. Good. Pretty busy already for 10 to 8. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm sure we will be out to the nose bleed. My, my son run the, my son Evan run the theater um, the first year. My daughter Stacy, who lives in Nebraska, she still actively helps. She does our Facebook and uh, some of the website stuff, as does my wife. Julie helps a lot, so it, it's still pretty much a family-run business. I talk to Glenn Pernod every day, and we get along real well, and uh, everything's great with us. And, like, I can do just about anything we want over there, and you don't complain. And you know, the kids, the, the people, my employees, it's fun being around the younger people as you get older. Um, I probably don't really care to ever grow up. Have you missed a show you'd like to see? Pioneer On Demand has all of your favorite productions available to watch online at your convenience, including past episodes of Postcards. Meet artist Deb Larson, a wife and mother who went back to school to get her degree in art and is now working on a series exploring the personal lives of friends and family. Yeah, now that you mentioned it, I want to come by and try to knock that off all the time, too. <laughs> there is this interesting dynamic between us. And, but I want to note that, you know, these are things that you have in your life. Right. These, this yes. is, you've been interested in right. Actually, Chinese culture. Yes. Well, he's got a white face, you know, I mean, it's kind of... <laughs> you know, and he's an older dog. He looks like an older dog. Yeah, I like you know, the way you did the colors. I, I like all your paintings. We are at Java Jewels Bistro and Coffee Shop in Ortonville, Minnesota. It's uh, my opening night for this show, this art exhibit, uh, which is the culmination of my work from this past year as a senior at U of M uh, Morris. My series is called uh, Couch Culture. I just realized that I grew up after dinner and doing the dishes. We sat at, with my family and we watched TV and we ate snacks, you know? And that was our time together because you're so busy during the day and we just hung out. And I just uh, realized that I think there's a very large percentage of Americans that do that. 
and I was intrigued, especially when I started working with my kids, uh, about how that, what that looks like, um, and how are people, you know, to see if I can catch how they're connected, and also their personalities. And I've worked, I've over the two semesters, I worked a lot with symbolism. I realized that my most of my friends are very attached to the outdoors, and they, um, they are not inside very often. Uh, but it's a major player as well because often it uh, says something about where I choose to put them, says something about the subjects. What do you think of me putting the window behind you guys? I love it. It makes me want to move the chairs in front of a window. <laughs> but we don't seem to have the space to do that. Right. I love everything you did. Everything. I've always thought of myself um, as an artist, but I didn't always know what I wanted to do with it. And then while I was raising children, I didn't really think a lot about art. I was at a point where I was trying to figure out what was next, and my husband said to me, why don't you go back to school for art? And I said, okay, I think I'll do that. So it, boom, 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 you know, I ended up going to U of M Morris. When I first started painting after the first few years and I took a break, I, uh, opportunities for drawing landscapes kept coming up and I was like, no, 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 don't, don't box me in, you know, I need to draw people. But I ended up drawing, a lot, you know, painting a lot of landscapes and wildlife and um, flowers and that was a great way for me to grow, you know, technically. So it wasn't until I went back to school that this past year that I really got to do what I was excited about doing and that was people. I think it's uh, freeing. Um, it's a way of communicating what you're thinking and feeling and um, when you're working towards something you know that you have the potential for there's something very fulfilling about that and then just sharing with people is really this the arts community and being a part of that is very gratifying I, to I just feel like I belong in the arts community and uh, it just makes me want to be the best artist that I can be and share that with people. And there's just nothing like being in the studio and you're, the time goes by like you wouldn't believe and you get to change your mind at any moment because it's yours and you just keep evolving. Just keep growing. I'm just, I'm looking forward to getting my work out and further into the community of the Southwest region and then maybe breaking into the, the cities, maybe, you know, getting work through my website. And really it's just about a journey and just as long as I'm growing, I'm very lucky to have, be in the situation that I am with my husband. Uh, he's very supportive and a supportive community, arts community and friends and family. And But the more people I think, the more people that I touch with my art, I think it'll be uh, really good for me and my soul. Do you use Facebook, Twitter or other social media? Connect with us to get immediate access to behind the scenes videos, reviews and other postcards and pioneer news. Experience a unique form of theater where the actors don't have to memorize their lines and sound effects are created right in front of the audience at Lakes Area Radio Theater.
Lakes Area Theatre is an organization made up of about 150 troupe members that come together weekly to put a radio theatre production together. Uh, they will rehearse during the week and then on Friday evenings we do the shows in front of a live studio audience. They're recorded and then they are edited in post-production to be played on our network of so far 16 radio stations throughout Minnesota uh, probably two weeks after the fact after they're recorded. Lakes Area Theatre actually is the brainchild of Mike Roars. Mike is an appraiser and he works very long, long hours and during those times he oftentimes tuned into old-time radio theater on the internet. In listening to those shows he discovered a love for audio theater. Mike also is active in community theater so he loves the whole idea of acting and he just said we have to do this and I said you know Mike I'm you know it's just not on my radar screen right now but after a while you know when a seed is planted and sometimes it starts to marinate and grow uh, I thought yeah we do have to do that so I, I called him up and I said are you really serious about this and he said absolutely and here we are doing it and I am having a ball. Actually, everybody in the troupe is really having a great time. And went to Europe. When I returned, I set my sights on courting Bertha. Well, the play we're doing tonight is called Courting, courting Bertha. In tonight's show, I'm playing the part of Potter Palmer, who, along with his wife, Bertha, built the Palmer House Hotel in Chicago, which was destroyed just recently after it was built by the Great Chicago Fire. And this story tonight is a, is a love story between Potter and his wife, Bertha, and how they worked together to rebuild the Palmer House Hotel. I heard about Lakes Area Theater and um, Hermes, the artistic director, actually reached out to me. She had seen an article about my documentary, Love Under Fire, the story of Bertha and Potter Palmer, and asked me if I was interested in writing a radio play. And I was just really intrigued by that, um, that the thought of that. I had never written a radio play. I liked the idea of just distilling down a story into just dialogue and stripping away the stage direction, the setting, everything, and just, it's all about the dialogue. So I was really intrigued, and I also like the idea of supporting local theater. It's so important. It, people really enjoyed, people did enjoy the play, but just listening to them sort of react, laugh to the certain lines, and there's something, like, within the theater, as long as there's no coughing or shuffling, or, like, when, you can tell when the audience starts getting restless, you're, you've lost them. And tonight, everyone was just, it was quiet, and they were laughing when they were supposed to laugh. So that's always, that's good, feed, that's positive feedback. We are doing this because we love production work. We love acting. It is a new way for some people to learn a, a, a new craft within the auspices of acting. And there's nothing better than entertaining people and having them walk away happy and satisfied for, for a person's hard work. We do our shows for audiences every Friday night and that is when they are recorded. I then get the opportunity to edit which is when I go to my playground because it's fun to add layers and depth to the, the shows that are recorded. Uh, usually the layers of depth are done with, with sound effects. So in the post-production process is when I really have my fun and the show will come together for me. The history of radio theater uh, goes back to the 1900s. Uh, in the 30s and 40s, 50s, it really was at its zenith in popularity. And it was a way of entertaining the masses through the media that was available for them. Some of the radio shows 
found their way into the 60s and continued to be popular then, but that really, the, the mid to late 50s into the 60s is when television really started to boom and uh, movies became more popular for people to attend and, and so forth. So uh, ra audio theater really kind of went by the wayside. It has, interestingly enough, seen a resurgence in popularity recently. There, with, the, with the advent of the internet, there are a lot of groups out there that are, are doing audio theater. Not many groups are actually producing it for radio specifically, and uh, that makes us a little bit unique. I think there's this, just something within us where we just love hearing the spoken word. It's when you're a child, you love when your mom or your dad reads you a story, and I think that's kind of um, podcasts, radio show, radio plays, I think they kind of tap into that. Um, and it, you kind of expect a little bit more of the audience because there's no visual cues. They have to kind of fill it in, fill in the blanks for themselves. But with a radio play, you have to listen, you have to imagine. Um, so I think there's a spot for it, for sure. I think listening to radio was more of a family uh, time to be together. You know, people were gathered around the radio listening and not just gazing at a screen somewhere, but actually listening to the story together. And I hope we're doing that for people. Visit pioneer.org for more information on postcards and other Pioneer productions. How many biscuits can you eat this evening? This evening, this evening, make my coffee good and strong. Keep on bringing them biscuits on well, this morning, this evening, this evening, right now. Well, I love my wife and I love my baby this morning. Well, this morning, I love my wife and I love my baby this evening. This evening, I love my wife and I love my baby. I love them biscuits, sopped and gravy well, this morning. This evening, Baby 
six months ago I had climb down the stairs To find him in his arms The where And I had climb in his bed With the blankets over our hands To dream of making that honey bread That honey bread that we made Just never work, and now we are on speaking with terms and no, no favors. Sit beneath the table, not even if we're counting it, but just you and me in our short sleeves. But you cut us off, so I guess that makes it a tank top. This program on Pioneer Public Television is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4, 2008. Additional support provided by Mark and Margaret Yako Juline in honor of Shalom Hill Farm, a nonprofit rural education retreat center in a beautiful prairie setting near Wyndham in southwestern Minnesota. ShalomHillFarm.org. The Arrowwood Resort and Conference Center. Your ideal choice for Minnesota resorts offering luxury townhomes, 18 holes of golf, Darling Reflection Spa, Big Splash Water Park, and much more. Alexandria, Minnesota, a relaxing vacation or great location for an event. Explore Alex.com. Easy to get to, hard to leave.